Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Scott. And today you're watching a plane fly over our shot for the fourth time today. And that's just for what we're doing now, not for mission earlier. <sighs> Enemy you <UAV> have <gasps> been coming. <sighs> no, dude, you want to do it right, you gotta get rocket launcher. Oh, yeah, well. Optic blast! Productions Podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Josh. And I'm Brian. And we are recording today from the safety of home. It's nice here. I, I, I can't say no. Yes. <laughs> we we fear what lies outside. Um, you'll notice on the end cap, real quick, before we get into why we're afraid, we've got uh, my brother, Brian. Hello, everyone. Yep, uh, Scott unfortunately could not join us today, so we got Brian in as our sub. For those watching on the YouTube, uh, you will notice that he is a couple shades darker, so he's as close to Scott as we can get. Yeah, I, I fill in for the minorities. I'm like halfway between white and Milano. Even though you're Vietnamese. Yeah, well that's the thing, I'm indistinguishable. See, if you didn't say Vietnamese, they'd be able to extrapolate on what race I actually am. Yeah, well, the wispy mustache doesn't help. It's like, oh, he kind yeah. of looks like a little, like a little extra you boy. You know, I could have come on here talking like this. I'm the guy you got from Home Depot to be on the podcast. Oh, that's a good idea. If we're ever missing Scotty Gore, he's going to give a guy five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we got paid for this? No. No. Oh. I just support laborers. <laughs> that would actually be really funny to get someone on here like that. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm Josh, and I'm a complete stranger. I'm a hobo. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, and I want my whiskey. You promised so, me cheese whiz. There's a reason why we're recording from the house today, and it's because we are in fear. Mm -hmm. Josh gave me a story, and it is it is actually Scott's worst nightmare, which I'm really. Upset that's not going to be here today because we had a clown mask planned and everything. Mm -hmm. May come up in a later video. So, Scott, this is testing if you're watching the episodes. <laughs> and if he's not watching the episodes, then that makes it even better. Because yeah. we gave him a warning. What is the story that's happening in Wasco, Waco, Wasabi? Wasco, Wasco, California. It's where it's supposed to originate as a uh, photo project. Uh, it's everywhere, so if you don't know about it, I'm surprised. Ah, uh, there are clowns in the middle of the night just showing up next to landmarks and places. And that's how it's originally started before the art project. Now it's kind of getting out of hand because now it's gone nationwide as far from California as Jacksonville. Uh, so you're saying there's a lot of people climbing around? In the middle of the night. Ouch. You're saying something funny's going on? We can do so many fucking clown puns. Okay, seriously, no, no more funny business. The the issue is that it's now going from like, ha, ah, it's creepy clowns next to things, to creepy clowns on your doorstep. There are videos, uh, especially from Jacksonville, you can find those easiest. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida? Florida. Oh, no wonder. These aren't clowns, they're meth addicts. Florida, man. They, uh... They're now like going to people's homes, and they're supposed to be neighbors pranking neighbors. You hope. You hope. <laughs> because one was knew exactly where their little porch camera was, and just starts punching a pumpkin till it's pulp and broken. And maybe, awkwardly staring at this camera, like I do every episode. Maybe the clown actually just really hates like the pumpkin spice phase that happens <laughs> this time of year. 
Like, that would actually be really funny if the same cloud did that at a Starbucks. <laughs> uh, but it's a latte, and he's just, like, punching through the foam. Yeah, but now we're just, like, giving, like, killers, like, a reason to dress up. Which is the worst thing in my mind. Because they're now clowns also carrying weapons, such as guns and machetes. I know a couple of those, just to clarify, have been... They come back as false, but then a couple of them have also come back as verified. Yeah. So there's a wishy-washy little area where it's like, not all clowns have weapons, but if you have a weapon, there's a chance he might be a clown, I guess, is the Venn diagram that's <laughs> happening. <laughs> no. Can I get a Venn diagram of that? Uh, it's like, has weapon, is clown, and there's like a weird like little circle, no. like circle overlap action. Justifiable fear. <laughs> uh, yeah, the... Thing from the police seems to be, you know, if they're just standing there doing nothing, being standing there being creepy, you know, stay away if it bothers you. But I wonder how stop calling the police over that versus the ones that you know actually do have weapons and are doing something menacing. I wonder if this is actually affecting like clown business, <laughs> like the clown union is like, like step up. We're not going to take this anymore. Yeah, like there's a clown <laughs> sitting there like watching a phone that hasn't rung in the past week. And it's like, why are people calling? And he like just Googles like clowns and that's happening. He's like, what? No! That's not what we're about at all! He's like trying to go outside and like promote being a clown. <laughs> no, no, it's okay, kids! There's a clown menacing my children. No, I'm making balloon animals! See, this one's a sword. He's got a weapon! <laughs> I, I just want to see the clown union take to the streets in protest. Like they did against, uh, who was it? Was it uh, the KKK? What, what was that clown? I, I don't expect you to know the actual answer, but there's an organization of clowns that anti-protest a KKK, or they anti-rallied a KKK rally. And the KKK rally was coming, marching down the street, and the clowns came right, right up to their barricades. And as the KKK was shouting, like, white power, like, the clowns would retort with, like, white flower, and they'd throw, like, the powder everywhere. <laughs> And stuff like that, and it absolutely, like, not that you can make a KKK union, like, any better, but it completely demonetized them, and they just left. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, my thing is, wouldn't that technically be racist, because clowns are technically in whiteface? Yeah, we're offended. Two-thirds of this table are offended. No. <sighs> well, you don't count them. <laughs> I'm whiter than Bobby. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, yes you are. Brian, yeah, you are. Bri Brian actually <laughs> described you. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna put him on the spot here. He described you as having the whitest voice. <sighs> yeah, like if, if you if you aren't uh, watching the video podcast, if you just cut all of that out, the person in this room who would immediately get spotted as the white guy would be you. <laughs> <laughs> and now and now you're just racist. I'm white. <laughs> it, it, it comes with the territory. territory. Yes, <laughs> it's expected of me. I think it's funny. It works out. <laughs> so, this clown. I mean, do you think there's more cases of clowns terrorizing people than Ebola right now? I hope so. I really hope so too. Like that would. What, what if there's let's clowns hope, with Ebola? Let's hope to God there's no co causality here. <laughs> it's no co the number of increasing clowns is the increase <laughs> victims of the Ebola virus. <laughs> Does Ebola cause you to turn into a clown? Yes, there you go. That's that's what the zombies came back as. This was like that weird, gross-ass person that they showed for the fake Ebola story, the Ebola zombie story. They come back as clown. He's just, like, they got up like that, like, uh, pat, 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 pat. Hey, kids. I don't know why my, like, it's like a weird, like, drunk, sad, crusty <laughs> clown. <laughs> it's like, uh... What shorts is Krusty? Is it He's Kissinger? It's like Krusty Kissinger. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, bang, bang. I just went to Bad Zoidberg. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, off of clowns, because, you know, I can't make another clown pun. I'm out of clown puns. I'm sorry. Man. I'm just gonna get Well hey, the... sometimes you gotta get off the bowl and get out the rodeo. Yeah, I'm just gonna get in my car with forty friends and leave. That was as close as I got. Anyways. <laughs> since it is October. 
That's right. Segways. They're hard. Since we're in October, and I know that the Geeky Gamer Girls had done some of their horror movie shoutouts with their podcast. Make sure you check them out at link at end of show. Otherwise, just check out the YouTube channel or cocksoftproductions.com slash G3P. Let's talk about our horror movie stuff. And we we do things a little bit differently. Instead of talking about, like, oh, what's your favorite movie? What's your horse? You know, what's your favorite story? We, we do it as... What is the worst fucking horror movie that you've ever seen? <laughs> and I'm not talking about like, oh no, that was so stunning. Why would they make her crawl on needles? Like Saw, which is absolutely like the worst thing I've seen in a while. Uh, I'm talking about like, wow, that was an awful fucking movie. I have mine. You've got yours loaded up? Yeah. What about you, Brian? You got one loaded up? Uh, I have a couple. You sort of cut me off earlier on, but I think I got one or two. And then I know I've got one loaded up, so let's see. Any, mini, miny, Josh. Thanks, Kelly. Is it? Well, I guess it would be a horror movie. <laughs> technically, that's a movie that you can carry on into November, too. Yep. <laughs> it bridges the gap between October and November. I that, love that movie. Especially the opening sequence. I have not seen the movie. Please oh! It. All right. So, Native American... Uh, what do they want to shop? Oh, we'll say shaman. Creates uh, this monster to kill the pilgrims for the atrocities they commit. Naturally. And it's to, you know, <laughs> every 13 years, this monster rises. And what it is is a talking turkey with a hatchet. Sometimes. It's just a poorly rubberized puppet. And it just like makes awful, awful jokes. All in Ebonics, by the way. Is it Ebonics? Yeah. yeah. The, the turkey basically goes, Hey, what's up, motherfucker? What you doing in here? I'm gonna kick myself some ass. Like, that was that was probably the scariest part of the movie. Gravy-flavored, super small condom. Yes. Uh, but yeah, these kids... From an outside perspective, this sounds like you are both on acid. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, there's totally a turkey, and it, like, kills people with a hatchet, and that fucks this girl. <laughs> it, it, it's so bad. No, I just have turkey porn in my mind. You, you, everyone should see this movie to see how awful it is, because it, it's also one of the. Is it like it's one of those movies that like it, bad to be bad? I I feel like it was on purpose, but it went better than expected. Good. <laughs> when that, that's like, the when, best. That's when always trying to be awful. Yeah, like shoot 'em up going into action film is always the ag- bad action movie that I cite. But it's like, we did this so cheesy and ham-fisted, and it came out perfect. This is just absolutely bullshit schlock, but it's awesome. Um, yeah, The Father is, like, one of the worst sequences I've ever seen. Uh, oh, the movie. I, I, I love and hate it, especially for one scene, because it affects the fat guy in me. Because it makes me afraid to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, I never thought you'd ever say that you were afraid to eat. They're, 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 one of the kill sequences is this guy sees this floating magical turkey and he's been really hungry. He's been running away from a killer turkey demon all day. Uh, so there's, it, a, there's it, a little it, mental it, fuck you in there too that I feel where it's like, oh, I can't get you, but I'm going to eat the fuck out of this one. <laughs> yeah. And he does. And it's just, and it just looks awful. And the next thing, he's like, oh, mm. <laughs> For the audio podcast, like alien, just, like alien, it just bursts out of his stomach. For the audio podcast, all they got was the sound effects of, uh, <laughs> and it's like anything could have happened. For diving that. board, yeah, they, he could have been like, uh, and fell off a diving board. He could have went, uh, and like stubbed his toe on the little fucking door stopper <laughs> that just goes. <laughs> So, audio podcast. Could have been thank thank you. I hope you just imagined something very weird during that. Video podcast, you got the visual demonstration. Yeah. Lucky you. And so that movie, to me, is like a movie I will show any time of year to anyone. Just because of how awful it is. Excellent. I like that choice. What about you, Brian? What, what, what's, I, I, I can see that you've got a fucking list from here. Oh, you've that's... got a litany of shitty movies. Yeah, okay. Well, the first one... Sort of going with the bridging the gap, you know. 
Christmas always sort of encroaches on Halloween. So I think this is a little bit of pushback for that. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is Bill Goldberg's Santa's Sleigh. Yes! Which or bridges the gap if you watch Thanksgiving from October to November. You can watch Santa's Sleigh from November <laughs> to December. Yeah, well, basically, basically it's Halloween going, oh, Nightmare Before Christmas was so wholesome. Let's flip that on its head. Because... What's this? What's... Ah. The entire movie, to give you... If you don't know who Bill Goldberg is, Bill Goldberg is a goddamn wrestler. He's built like a shit brick house and completely bald. So to counteract this, they give him a ZZ Top style beard, which isn't even white. <laughs> and have him run around drop kicking using table saws and, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, circular saws, and at one point in the movie, a ninja star to kill people. And it, it gets so ridiculously out of hand that the first segment, he literally kills a woman with the star off the Christmas tree while it is still plugged in. This is something that, if you sat someone down and said, I'm going to show you a Santa Claus horror movie, they would laugh, and the second this movie starts up, they don't even know where the fuck it's going. Black Christmas? No. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm sure that family that got killed by the Christmas star probably switched it to an angel the next year. Yeah. Just saying. Oh, can you imagine? That would be way uh, worse. Yeah, a little cherub, like, in your <laughs> abdomen. Uh, at that point, I'm just going to go Jewish. You know, menorahs are at least uh, quick. Yeah, yeah, it will... It's a fucking nine-pointed trident. Yeah. Nine? Eight. 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 Nine? Eight crazy nights. We're not Jewish. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> uh, no, that's just oil and fire at that point. Yeah, but both. You can get one of those stupid-ass candles from Kwanzaa. <laughs> <laughs> Death by candle. Oh, uh, the it? Yule? The Yule pole? Yes. <laughs> the festive And pole. all other winter holidays. God, Christmas is dangerous. We have fucking weapons in all of them. Why aren't uh, there more horror movies? We're putting recently? electricity on a flammable tree and surrounding that with breakable glass objects. It used to be candles. I think we've learned our lesson. We got a little bit safer. We didn't replace the tree with something that doesn't burn. We just replaced the candles with something that's like, oh, this is just electricity and little balls contained all around. Isn't the worst thing about that movie, like, the sport that saves the day is that stupid one with the broom? Oh, and the uh, curling, curling. Curling. Curling <laughs> saves the fucking world. From Goldberg Santa. Oh, well, of course, because, you know, Canadian Christmas, they just got ready for Boxing Day. They still had a technically, they still have one more day to live. So, curling should save the day. Yeah. That one, that's that's going to be my worst horror movie because I've seen Thanksgiving and I at least enjoy Thanks it. what? Thanks Killing. I don't <laughs> Thanksgiving, the fish sequel. Are you chewing gum? Yes. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but don't put it on his... Okay. <laughs> I'm rolling it up in my suggestion list. It's funny because we went through like a little pre-list thing where it's like, you should do this on the mic, you should the do The one thing mic. you didn't mention... The I, one thing I did not oh, mention was gum, which is like the key rule. <laughs> The key rule is gum. My apologies for everyone watching at home. Gum is something that I often have. So, anyway, I completely understand. But it's just one of those things. Like as soon as it's like thank killing, I'm like, why would he say thank killing? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Thank killing at the very least was something entertaining. It was a unique concept. I've heard of people like a uh, weird out night Santa went crazy thing. I would never in a million years put Goldberg to that. That was the part that confused me. Being a former wrestling fan. Uh. There's also a movie, Pat's Obsessed with Getting, Santa with Muscles. Absolutely. So, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yes. Hulk Hogan. And this is like shitty roided out Hulk Hogan. So he's not he really big or anything. He's just that weird roid cut. Like three ninjas, Hulk Hogan. And he was a little out of shape on that one. It's more like a Bionic Commando. Oh. Uh, yeah. Was it Bionic Commando? No, Suburban Commando. Suburban Commando. Yeah, Bionic Commando was a game. Yeah. Where your wife was your arm. Yeah, spoilers. Keep keeps you close, I guess. Although she won't shut the fuck up. No, I'm kidding. Did you have another one on that list besides uh, Santa's sleigh? It's all gone now. Well, I have. It's all gone now. <laughs> <laughs> that is a depressing statement. Um, yeah, I've got one other one. Uh, this one, Patton Oswalt, as I've been informed, has gone off on for quite a bit of time. Is uh, Deathbed, the bed that eats people. I thought it was just called uh, the bed that eats. 
And the only reason I say that is the worst movie is because the premise is a bed that eats people. However, the bed is stationary. Unlike you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah, the bed that kills people. Pat Oswalt did a whole big skit on this. And it was pretty much... Oh, I can't even remember, like, his exact jokes, but it's how the bed gets progressively worse. Like, there was an exorcism over the bed. It's a, like, demon's blood, like, spilled on the bed. Now the bed's evil. And it's like a holiday... I don't want to say a holiday inn, but it's like a bed and breakfast or something mm-hmm. like that. So everyone that sleeps on this bed gets eaten by the bed. Oh, cool. It's like that uh, one of the episodes of Hunger. Hunger? Uh, HBO had a, a series of different uh, directors doing horror movie stuff, even one with uh, Milo. Uh, and animal fur skins. That's kind of crazy. Uh, hu- uh, one episode of Hunger it deals with this couple goes to a friend's back house out in the woods. And they get the honeymoon suite. And the woman wakes up after a night of passion with her husband, and he's gone. And it goes out throughout the whole episode. But the, the thing is, the woman who runs the bed and breakfast is, uh, is a bitter witch who had a cheating husband, so now any man who's ever cheated on the woman he's with in the honeymoon suite, prior to them getting married, will now dis- uh, be now uh, uh, taken into the bed. And so now there's this weird, like, pe- uh, souls of people who she uses oh, to Oh, thank enjoy. God. Thank God it's only the souls. Like, they, 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 they physically manifest from, like, the sheets and stuff. And do this weird orgy sequence in it. it like, Hunger uh, was uh, always weird. What, when was Hunger made? It was H- I think it was HBO, and it was like three, four years ago. The Bed That Eats was back in the 70s, so theoretically, that spawned... Is that the, the song of Bed that line, line, Which means that somebody... And the more frightening idea is that not only did someone think of a bed that kills people, somebody thought of it twice. I don't know which one is the more terrifying thought. Well, more so, what if they started getting spinoffs? Like, that was popular. What about the pull-out couch that devours? The futon that eats people. Yeah. Nightstand of death. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Lazy boy. Yeah, I can't holes. think of any shittier movies. Uh, or shittier pieces of furniture. The, the Ottoman game. of the Apocalypse. Uh, mine has to be, and it's bad because I actually like this guy on a personal level, like he seems like he'd be great to hang out with, but it's David Arquette made a movie, like starred and directed a movie called The Tripper, and it is it is one of those movies that's supposed to be like really ham-fisted, because pretty much Ronald Reagan is going around a concert and killing hippies. Like you do. Did Nixon make an appearance? Yeah, I was trying to go for Reagan. I'm not I, the, my best impression of Reagan is, ow, my chest. Because <laughs> he got shot. <laughs> That's a horrible uh, joke. Every time I see Reagan, it always comes out Nixon. Yeah, it, it, to be fair, they're future enough. Yeah. Future of his fault. Exactly. Damn you, Matt Groen, Groening. Shining, Groening, man. man. Fuck it. I don't care. Matt G. Why didn't you just say, like, damn you, Agnew? Agnew. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the tripper, it, that, uh, I can't even explain it further. It's just, there's hippies. There's Ronald Reagan. There's less hippies. There's less hippies. <laughs> His main weapon's an axe, which I'm not sure was a if it was a thing with Reagan. Well, was he Republican or Democrat? He Republican. Yeah, so it could be like an Abraham Lincoln parable. Oh, yeah, I guess. Did Lincoln you are hippies? free to die. Did, did Lincoln... <laughs> Lincoln never had to deal with hippies. <laughs> he just had to deal with a really shitty wife, the country splitting in half, and headaches. Possibly vampires. And possibly vampires, thank you. Which was actually a good horror movie. But it was an action movie, so it was like, it was a yeah. schlock. Uh, speaking of good things, let's jump ship real quick. Uh, quick lightning round, because we're kind of getting to our halfway point. Best horror movie deaths. And I will take this one first because I want to make sure mine is said. It was a shitty movie. It was Jason X. For those of you who are watching the movie, you might know what I'm already thinking about. When he's chasing people, he's at one point where he has 
they put him in like a simulation, like Star Trek style, to confuse him. And all it is is two big breast. Uh, I don't even know what to call them. Campers? And they're pretty much like, oh, blah, 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 Camp Crystal Lake is great. Ha, ha, ha. Let's get our sleeping bags and cuddle. Do you want to cuddle with us? Mm. And Jace is just staring at them. And it cuts to what they're doing to escape. And when it cuts back to Jason, he has one sleeping bag in his hands, and he's beating the other sleeping bag with it. And you can just hear the girls going, like, ah, ah, like typical, like, not like horror movie screams, but just like, no, stop it, Becky, no. And he, like, after he gets done beating one sleeping bag, he just throws the other sleeping bag, like, hits a tree and falls down dramatically. And he, like, walks out of the simulation, but it's just, it's that nice little cut. <laughs> That every time I see that movie, I have to like watch that scene three times, <laughs> and it's just it, it was so abrupt, it was so golden, and that's where I usually get the I beat a sack of blank with a blank. What about Josh? For horror movie deaths? Yes, best horror movie deaths. Oh, uh, or best horror movie death. It could I, be something that made you laugh, or it could be something that the delicious irony. That Freddy always serves. Oh, yeah. We have a girl who's a recovering drug addict. Specifically heroin. Uh, she was a fan of using needles. And she's like, you can't hurt me here in my dreams, because I'm a dream warrior. Oh, my <laughs> fucking... Mm. <laughs> this is, isn't this the second time you talk about dream warrior on the podcast? Second time, probably. I still have not seen that movie since oh, the first time you've seen it. Oh, the first time you mentioned it. So it sounds like absolute bullshit. I wanted to watch it, but it's always been like, oh, that sounds interesting. It's like, mm, whoa. <laughs> like, I would just get lost on it. And, and so, he, he like, you know, like I said, confronts her. She's like, you can't hurt me or anything. And it takes place in a dark alley. It's drugs. And the next thing he shows, instead of his little knife fingers, all his, hand, all his fingers are hypodermic needles. Mm. And he just comes after her with that. I love the irony of him getting her, you know, with the thing she's been trying to overcome. She overcame, ish. And well, enough to become a dream warrior. <laughs> no, it's just what me. was the application process for that? Uh, the dream warrior thing was it follows one of the girls from Elm Street, uh, a blonde girl. I can't remember her name, and she basically can pull people into dreams so they're conscious. So she she did it with her dad too, and he's like it it freaked him out, and then later, and so they're basically at a sanitarium for that girl as well as any other kid that lived on Elm Street. Okay, so it makes sense that they found the heroin addict at the sanitarium. Yeah, I'm just picturing like we had like a lineup of people. It's like, well, this one's a psychology major, this one's like a military person with absolutely no scarring background, and we have a heroin addict. It's like, yeah. give me the bitch with the crow feet on the. Uh, arms. Yeah, the, uh, and there is... Pro tracks. Uh, That's the right term. The what? The little... Yeah, yeah. Bricks, yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> there, there is an arguably better death, but I just love the irony. Okay. There's an arguably better death, but I love the irony that comes with this one. Because there's a guy in a wheelchair who's being hunted by Freddy. <laughs> what, what, is what, I'm not saying say, what is Freddy turning to that one? Stairs? I'm not <laughs> saying anything for that one. So that's just the saddest thing. Uh, what about you, Brian? Alright, well, I have two of them here, but I'm going to go with one from Comedy Horror. Uh, it has to be said, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil is probably one of my <laughs> yes. favorite... Yes. One of my favorite horror movies of all time now. And the part that really solidified it for me was a part where... I can't remember if it was Tucker or Dale, the one that was played by the uh, pilot from Firefly. Tucker. But Tucker. Okay. Tucker was running through the woods after chopping into a hornet's nest with a chainsaw flinging over his head. <laughs> and one of the campers at this lake, to give you a quick premise of Tucker, Dale, and Evil, basically it's the hillbillies in the woods trying to kill teenagers, except not. The hillbillies are trying to build a cabin, and the hitchhikers just mistake them as killers. And they're really dumb. Hijinks ensue. Both okay. sides are dumb. Everyone is dumb. But yeah, so he's running, covered in hornets with a chainsaw, through the forest. One of the campers notices him, screams, starts running away, and they end up running side by side, looking at each other, confused at why the other one is running all of a sudden. And the camper gets impaled by a tree branch, like, 
three feet through his chest. This kid was going on a clip faster than a cheetah. Yeah, like that. It's a good death because one, it's fucking hilarious. It's so, it's and fun. two, how fast do you think that you'd have to be running to actually like kill yourself on a tree branch? Do you want a sharp pointy one? Yeah, really fast. Like, cause I I know Tomb Raider is when I think of it being impaled to death by branches. Tomb Raider, the new Tomb Raider, is the first one that comes to mind. Cause I always fucking died. But she's at least like falling down after the neck. This one went through ribs and sternum. Yeah, this, I, this dude took it to the soul places. All, all I can think of when I think of that movie now is. Golly, officer, I've had a doozy of a day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, kids come out of my property and keep killing themselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we've just about hit the halfway point, so hey, get ready for a plug. And now, before the next show starts, let's enjoy an intermission. All right, we have two plugs this week, one for us and one for one of you. First plug is we are going to be doing another beatdown soon. You guys remember the Facebook game where we post the topic, you post the fighters, and we discuss the results. This week's topic is... Scary Things versus Scary Things. Yes, yeah, Scary Things versus Scary Things. Think of your best horror matchup. Can be a monster, can be a person, can be a demon, can be a an entity of some kind. I don't know. There's a lot. Maybe of an excremental. So, some examples that we're thinking of is, like, the Mummy versus Frankenstein's monster. Real fire winner, wins. Real winner of that is definitely fire. It burns! Some other examples could be... Yeah, again, I'm going with the shit demon Golgotha from... Uh, I can't Dogma. The Thank you, Dogma versus Monster, or Jack Schmidt from Monster. Man, that fight is the shit. <laughs> It's one of the shittiest fights you've ever seen. What about you, Brian? You got a shit out of you. <laughs> that might be a title. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is going to be Necromorphs from the Dead Space franchise versus Xenomorphs from the Alien franchise. Both are ungodly abominations that mutate off of humans and possibly each other. <laughs> But oh, then what happens when they breed with the predator or a necromorph and then he's like bleh and he like shoves eggs down someone's throat and they're like bleh and there's more. Yeah. Alien versus predator too. Well, then you just write off and say no. Wow, ah, scary. No, no, I, that, that sounds awful. Terrifying. No, not bad, just I no. Let's just not go to space. Yeah, that's a suicide out. We're, we're yeah. safe in home. We're safe in the home. Yeah. No clowns, no necromorphs, no, no space. But we're flying through space. You are already right, too. By the way, aren't necromorphs also aliens? Second plug is for a listener. One of our listeners, Heather, donated a very generous $50 to Cogstop last night. So, in typical Cogstop fashion, we're going to block Josh out with a big thank you card. So, thank you, Heather. You rock. Thank you. Thank you. This one's for you. For the record, that's where Scott would have been scared by a clown. <laughs> so, I'm coming for you, Scott. In the director's cut, we're going to make Scott's face over Brian's face. And then we're going to Photoshop a clown face over Josh's, and then it'll be all like, <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Thank you for the motion, Brian, of the flailing arms. That will be perfect. We'll just use that, and we'll photo Scott. Photo, I almost said photo Scott. We'll Photoshop Scott. Scott needs to learn Photoshop so he can be the photo Scott. Yeah, there you go. The photo Scott. The... <laughs> so... I don't have a next-gen system. I barely have a current-gen system. But there is a game that's convincing me to buy next-gen. And that game right now is Alien Isolation, since we talked about Xenomorphs anyways. Holy shit, does this game look good. One of the main basic premise of you are a female on a ship 
And aliens are coming to fuck your shit up. Is my name Ripley? Actually, yes, you're Ripley's daughter in the game. That's first two minutes, so it's not a spoiler. Now, now I'm just thinking of, like, Khan so from King of the Hill, like, Ripley Jr., get in here and kill some aliens. Ha ha, you funny. I don't know, I got, I got a really bad Khan impression. Well, yeah, it was close. Yeah, it was, it was vaguely Asian. <laughs> just like us. Hey! Uh, so, it's a first-person game. There's Xenomorphs, which is aliens. There's Shithead Survivors, which it used the... And I'm forgetting the game. It's the one where you have to climb over the dust. I Am Alive. I Am Alive. It's using the I Am Alive kind of social engine, where when you come across survivors, you don't know... You can get, like, a brief thing of what they might do, but not every survivor is helpful. So you might come up on some, and they're convinced that you are impregnated somehow with the alien or something like that, chest bursters, all that stuff, and they will draw arms against you. There's some other ones that are scared shitless, and when you come by, they're like, oh, thank God, someone else here, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the basic, basic idea is that they've set up the game, so if you play it smart, you'll basically get the drop on anybody that you come across, so you'll be able to hear their conversations that they're having with either other crewmen or themselves in their panic state. So you could hear, like, I'm just gonna fucking shoot everybody, I swear to God, and you'll know, okay, this person's threatening, I'm obviously going to avoid or kill them, and then other times you're just gonna hear someone muttering, please, help, 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 and when you show up, they're gonna be thankful that you're there, but they might cause a lot of noise during the alien. The best thing going to noise about this game is that it has Kinect capabilities with the Xbox One, and I think the 360 might have the same feature, I'm not sure if it's for the 360. But the Xbox One is the one that I've been hearing about. PC as well. This is the best way to use the Kinect. It uses the camera and microphone options. So, you're playing a horror-based game that deals most of the game, I shouldn't say most of the game, but elements of the game deal with hiding. So you can like hide out in a locker, like close yourself in a vent, stuff like that. And with the Kinect's camera, you can like look around like this on your couch and it will detect your motion, and you'll be able to like peek over the grate and see like what's out there, things like that. But better than that is the microphone. So you're playing a horror game, you're seemingly in your, by yourself, and something spooks you, and naturally you go, oh, or some sort of that. And the mic will pick up the noise, and it will determine if that noise was loud enough for whatever walked by to hear you. Oh shit! Yes, Josh. Josh's face popped like, oh my god. So that is the best fucking mechanic. That is the best fucking mechanic for a horror game. If you have that in Silent Hill, Resident Evil, all those, people would shit their pants every time they play. People would be really well trained not to scream. Yeah, like that. That would actually, if this becomes something commonplace, that could completely change the horror game genre. Because that's a feature that definitely enhances it. Because the more afraid you become, the more quiet you have to be, and the harder it is to contain yourself yeah. and make these rash decisions to get out of the situation. Not only that, but since you're playing with that level of tension, like, I don't want to make a noise, it's making everything ten times worse because you're always under that little thing of tension. Like, Gus Sorolla from uh, Rooster Teeth was talking about it on one of their podcasts, and he's saying that he's such a pussy because he can only play the game for an hour and a half because he plays with the Kinect. And so he'll get stressed out to the point where it's like, I have to stop playing for a little bit. <laughs> Which is great. That's what you want from a horror game. You want a game that stresses you the fuck out. That's my perfect horror game. Yeah. No, absolutely. If it's going to cause terror, it should cause terror. Yeah, that's what it's marketed for. Uh, when I was talking to Brian before the show, he threw out a, another option that would make this game tenfold better. Yes, uh, for those of you who follow tech news a bit, something that has become very, very plausible in recent times is virtual reality, especially with the Oculus Rift or the Project Hydra, is it, from a, no, Project Nexus or something along those lines with PlayStation. That's Goggles on your face. Basically virtual reality. Mark now, Zuckerberg owns it. Now, if you've never seen the Oculus Rift, this is a headset that you put on. It has headphones built in now that completely immerse you in a 3D environment. It's set up to give you a specific depth of field so you see everything in the game as if you were seeing it in real life. 
Now, I said, can you imagine having to not only control your voice, your body, you know, all of these different movements, but also your entire body movement to hide, to do things, and also getting a complete three-dimensionality to this monster chasing you. It's no longer on the screen 10 feet across the room. It's two inches from your face. That'd be absolutely terrifying. Yeah, um, pretty much I'd be done with video games. And while we were talking about it, we were thinking about, like, what other... And let's keep it to the theme of horror, because that's kind of the themes episode we're doing, like, an early Halloween special with this, so welcome. Shit got real. Uh, what would be other horror games that would be perfect for an Oculus Rift setup? Like, my mind went immediately to Eternal Darkness. Because since this thing is on your head... There's just so many weird, like, little technical things you can do. Like, instead of doing, like, the video out or, like, the video one or whatever it was from the first one, you can have one of the two screens on the Oculus Rift go out. You can have a headphone go out. So it, it's, it's throwing you off balance because you're in this virtual reality thing and you're pretty immersed into it. But now something's gone wrong that pulled you out of it just a little bit, just enough to throw you off balance in the game. Where it's like, I can't hear out my left headphone. Oh, shit. Now I can't hear out my right headphone. Now I'm seeing horrible things happening on the screen. What the fuck is happening? What if it reversed the orientation of your look? Like, when you actually turn your head left, it turns the screen right. Yeah. So it just throws off your Incredible lag. So yeah. you go to turn left, and then, like, it's, like, like just up the uh, frame rate. Or down the frame rate, actually. Yeah. What would, what would be a game that you would try and bring? House of the Dead. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> Rail shooters! <laughs> this is the final battle! Hey, 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 Gene! Oh, on that note, Carnival. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Someone else that knows about that. We used to actually play that at Pulling Alley all the time. We beat the game. We, we beat the game. Yeah, we spent yeah, probably two hours. Yeah, was, 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 was that AMC? Did you do it at Pulling Alley? Yeah, there's an AMF Pulling Alley is tucked in. We went to the same bowling alley yeah, as a yeah, child. Yeah, yeah, they were back then. Anyways, yeah, that was like the nerdiest high five. Like, <laughs> remember a random rail shooter from a bowling alley? Yes, I do. <laughs> Slap hands. No one ever knows that game. I love that game. No, especially that... the last fight where you're on the zip line. It is that fun. Yeah. So that game is bullshit, though. There's like, there's <laughs> no geez. way I can get through this without being shot four times. We went through like. Eight dollars and quarters, like fuck it, I'm, we're beating this. Yeah. No, 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 we 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 went through probably like fifty. So I remember we kept going back for twenties. Shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell someone I spent fifty dollars on an arcade, not one game. We were kids. It wasn't, it wasn't even an arcade. It was like a little gaming session section. But yes, yeah, so a rail shooter would be kind of fun because then you can get the whole like motion of look up, look left, look right, and then that makes the zombie hordes the way it works. Mm -hmm. I just, that that little like five that went off my head, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> that means a lot of survivors are dying. Because it's going to be like, help me, and you're going to like look left just in time to see someone get like run over by a zombie in a car. And it's going to be like, oh no, and you're going to turn right and there's like frogs like eating a guy. <laughs> it's like, oh, I am so, everyone's fucked around me. Like, I can't turn around fast enough to save any of you. <laughs> I don't care how many health packs you have. Yeah, that, that's going to be the worst thing about that game, is just that. Especially, like, how some of the enemies in House of the Dead enter areas. Because they, like, pop out of vents, they crawl under new bathroom stall doors, and they, they will fall from 50 feet in the air just to land in front of you, and then get back up and come after you. Those are durable zombies, by the way. Yeah. yeah. They will flip and jump around. Uh, oh, the little ninja ones that are, like, throwing shurikens at you? Yes. And the fish. Fuck the piranha. Yeah, fuck it. The piranha <laughs> frogs. The boss fights are going to be even harder, because it's like, hey, don't forget, hit the little heart thing of this guy. He's, like, flying all around you now, 360. Just, ah, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> How much are we low? There have to be like a uh, like, of There's actually there's a uh, there's controllers they have that are called the Razor Hydras, which are basically like two little gun things, and they have buttons on the bottom, top triggers, and then uh, they also have like a safety button on the side too, and they have thumbsticks. They're, yeah, they actually are made to go with the uh, Oculus Rift. 
I keep up on this kind of technology that'd stuff. Be, so yeah. That'd be so cool, because then you could take two of the Hydras and do what you always do in the arcade, which is dual wield the pistols when you don't have a friend. And then all you do is you clack them against your hips. Like you have like the little clips sticking out. Now I'm a badass zombie hunter. Now things are fucked in 3D. <laughs> I'm oh, alternatively three. fighting. That'd be pretty solid. What about you, Brian? What would, what would you be your Oculus Rift game? All right, well, I would be remiss if we didn't mention Fatal Frame. Fatal Frame was one of those games that used to get me when I was playing PS2. Because just the concept of the only way to hurt these things is when you have the camera in your hand facing them used to blow my mind. Like it would, You would literally have to look these things in the face just to get rid of them. Now imagine you're playing a game, let's say, first-person shooter instead, but you actually have to raise, say, like a Wii U tablet or the Razer Hydras in front of you to use this. So not only are you in a creepy haunted house setting, but you're also in a setting that it basically draws out the idea of the exact opposite of alien isolation, where you have to be ready at a second's notice to react to these things to take them down, as opposed to staying still, or you can even work that in with the mechanic where you have to freeze and that's the only way they don't notice you if they go by. Things of that nature. Very, very creepy. <laughs> very creepy. Oh, hey Arnold. Sorry. Okay. Just a little massage trip. Uh, we've got about three minutes left. Cut this one short for the Holloway, holla, holla, holla back girl. <laughs> I was trying to yep. say no. Halloween extravaganza, and you're not and even holla, holla, and then as soon as I said it enough times, it's like I just had to remind the world that I ain't no holla back girl. Okay. I am given the times you've been around that track. Yes. I, I am strictly bananas. B a n a n a s. Are you done? No, I still got a couple more Gwen, Gwen Stefani jokes. I'll save them for later. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's do a quick wrap up. Um, let's start with Brian for the wrap up because you know not a lot of people know Brian. He's actually a really good artist. He's a, he does a drawing a day, roughly, yeah, roughly on your Tumblr, and much like Hogsop, where it's kind of like, hey, look at how we're progressing. Look at how you know we went from an audio podcast with a couple mics to the video podcast on YouTube, things like that. Uh, what's your what's your Tumblr? Where can people check you out and see your artwork? All right. Well, uh, as a little precursor, my Tumblr, the name that I use on basically every single site is Trigonotaku, except misspelled. Uh, that was because I was a very big fan of Metal Gear Solid when I was a kid, and Otacon was spelled with a C and not a K. So it's T R I G U N O T A C U dot Tumblr dot com. You could also find me on DeviantArt on Twitter, on basically any other site, YouTube and such. I will actually, uh, within the next month or so, be posting speed drawings of uh, progress work on different Pathfinder and other D&D related stuff for the campaign that I was running with my friends. Yep. And we'll put that in the show notes too for all those link drops because you know we do appreciate you coming on in Scott's app. By all means. Uh, where can they find you, Josh? Man must be bald. Where I don't do anything. I don't participate. Is that on Twitter? That's on Twitter. Is that on Xbox? That's on the Xbox. Is that on PlayStation Network? No, actually. I have monsters. <laughs> so it's on the Wii? Uh, true Twister. <laughs> You're going to have weird friend requests. Like, <laughs> I heard you telling dick jokes online, and uh, I wanted to know if you wanted to take out this big snake guy. Yeah! That right, let's go on an adventure. And you were best friends ever since. You can catch me on the main Cogstop Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash cog underscore stop. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Productions. Check the website out, cogstopproductions.com. And we have a Tumblr, too. It's pretty much all the same stuff that goes up on the other sites, but you can check us out on the Cogstop Productions Twitter, or Tumblr. Uh, yeah, anything, any last words of wisdom in our last 20 seconds? Remember, they can't get you. If you cover your feet with the bed sheets and keep circulating the links. What? For both of us or just me? For both. What? <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's it. Cold cut. Yep. Done. <laughs> Take it easy, guys.